Happy Independence Day. What's up, Pyros? Are you gonna have some fun this weekend? I hope so. I'm just out in the middle of nowhere, Utah, driving along. And looking at you. You look good. You look really good. Even better than normal. So I'm driving around and I wanted to uh, talk to you. It's Independence Weekend, not the 4th of July. I don't like that title. That's like Cinco de Mayo. Cuatro de Julio. It's just so nondescript. Independence from tyranny, tyrants, despots, psychopaths that wear crowns. 1776, baby. That's what this holiday is all or should be about. But it's not. So as I'm out in the middle of, of nowhere, Utah, rural Utah, I'm amazed at the connection I'm getting here. I guess high speed has come to uh, Utah in the middle of nowhere. Uh, 10 years after everyone else, I guess, in the world. But I just, I was driving along and I saw a cemetery and there were all these U.S. flags flying over it. And there were all these military flags. And then there was this wee little Utah state flag as well. Yay, yay sovereign states. And I want to ask you a question. Why is the celebration of the founding of our country and the sacrifices of the founding fathers and mothers, let's not forget them, men couldn't have done it without their wives, so girl power, shout out to the ladies, anyway, and their children, the founding children, let's call them that, that sounds weird, anyway, my question is, why do we co-mingle the current U.S. military industrial complex with the history of the founding of this nation. I know I hear it in church and I hear it on the radio and I hear it at events at church and scouts and all this, that they're out there fighting for our freedom. Really? How is that possible? I know this is controversial, but explain to me why conservatives especially, I'm looking at you, can talk about how evil the government is and Obama is the commander in chief and, and Bill Clinton and George W. Bush, if you're on the other side, and, and that these are really bad men with wicked Congress that does all of these things we hate. Yet somehow our patriotism, our nationalism, very dangerous. Nationalism leads us to continue to enlist into what James Madison, the father, quote unquote, of the Constitution, set called standing armies. Why in the world would we as independent Americans want a standing military? I don't get that. James Madison said that standing armies were the biggest threat to public liberty because within them comprises the seed of every evil, including the expansion of the executive, meaning the president becomes a king. Yet, I drive past the cemetery and tons of U.S. flags are flying. I'm like, why do we want to fly the national government symbol over our county and state buildings, over our cemeteries, and why do we want to continue to sign up for the military for which the government we loathe? It makes no sense. Look, let me ask you a question. If countries did in America what we do in those countries, do you think you would not stand up and fight against them? If a country, say the Iraq military had invaded the United States saying they were bringing us democracy. Would you not see that as a great evil? A report came out today, and I missed the number, but they said there's a large number of non-combatants in non-combat zones which have been killed by U.S. military drones. That is not American. No due process, no war declared, except this innocuous war on terror, which Sadly, many of you have family members or yourself who've been injured or killed for something called the war on terror. Yet you would stand against the war on poverty that Lyndon B. Johnson started, but somehow because it's fighting and it's military 
and you're patriotic, you support the U.S. government. Look, I believe that the U.S. government is part of the mark of the beast. And I believe that there's only two ways to kill a beast. You either cut the head off, you fight it with force, or you starve it, and it withers and dies. Why would we keep signing up to be in a standing army, which the founding fathers of this nation said were the most dangerous aspects of government? Why would we keep signing up to be in the beast? And why would you keep supporting the policies of that beast? U.S. foreign policy, the orders of which you are on, comes from the beast. You can't keep separating your logic from... I love the founders, and I love America, and I love freedom too. This wicked government keeps sending our troops all over the place. You just can't keep supporting this. Look, I'm a veteran. I was in the military, the U.S. National Guard, and I'm saying this as a vet. I was a pawn. I was used. I was getting money for school. I had no idea and no logical connection that the people who run this government are so evil. Yet for eight years with Pyrolytical, we have studied and uncovered so many deceptions by this government. And I hear conservatives say time and again on social media and on the radio and all these talk shows about how evil this government is. Barack Obama is the commander in chief. And all his policies were the same as George W. Bush. Yet, depending on who's in power, and which party they belong to, we keep accepting this. Paul in Ephesians 6 said that we wrestle not with powers and principalities, but with spiritual wickedness in high places, with the rulers, we wrestle with the rulers of the darkness of this world. It's probably a really bad um, retelling of that. But my church footnoted spiritual wickedness as governments and secret combinations. And you know the U.S. government is not like the founding generation. You know this. Barack Obama is no George Washington. So when I see the U.S. flag fly and I see the pledge set over and over and I see the flag fly over our buildings and the U.S. government controlling huge amounts of our land and we keep signing up for their military like I did 20-something years ago, we have got to stop. We have got to starve that beast. Doesn't mean you're not patriotic because you disagree with the government who creates the policies which kill so many people around the world. You can't just follow orders anymore. You can't celebrate the military industrial complex on the holiday where we celebrate our independence from tyrannical government, which we have far more than what the uh, founding generation had. They take so much of our treasure, they spill so much of our blood in the blood of those around the world. It's not the Christian thing, and it isn't the true American principles that I believe this nation will be founded on. So this Independence Day, I will not be celebrating the military-industrial complex of our day. I will be remembering the men and women who threw off the tyranny of a government not nearly as evil or as bad as the one we have today. So as you celebrate this weekend, I invite you to think about that, Pyros. I invite you to think about the disconnect we have between the past and the present. Well, I appreciate you listening to this rant. I know it's controversial. I love America. I love what she has stood for historically. And I will fight for her to the death. But I will not support the regime that we have now. No, sir. We can do better than this. Let's remember what we were founded on. Peace out. Have a great weekend. See you next time.